Hello guys, Alex Faratov here, and today we have uh, Kasim Aslam. Uh, so Kasim is the founder and CEO of uh, Solution 8, uh, which is one of the world's top-ranked Google Ads agencies. He's also the traffic coach for digitalmarketers.com elite coaching program, was hand-selected by Ryan Dice to help create digital marketer uh, new paid traffic certification, and also he's the co-host of Perpetual Traffic Podcast. Uh, which is one of the top marketing podcasts in the world. And I have a lot of a lot more things here, but uh, I think even this is uh, it's very impressive. So great to have you here. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Alex. Cool, awesome. So yeah, uh, I would like to talk about like Google Ads because that's like one of your like core um, things that you're very good at. So uh, with Google Ads, like what's working right now? Like 2022, like a lot of things, you know, obviously this was different, like platforms changed. So what do you think, what is he working with Google these days? Google just rolled out a, a program. Well, I can't say just rolled out. In 2019, Google started a beta program for something called Performance Max. And if you mm-hmm. text, tested Performance Max in 2019, it was awful. Like it didn't work. It was restrictive. Everybody hated it. What does it mean? Like uh, what, what that program entailed? It is a audience first marketing mechanism that Google has been deving for the last couple of years, uh, late last year, they just launched it in its entirety. So everybody has access to Performance Max now. And Alex, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's the biggest shift in paid media history. And what's funny is nobody knows all the traditional marketing narratives, like Neil uh-huh. Patel just wrote a blog bashing it. The biggest media buyers, the biggest media buying agencies have, have chosen not to use it for a myriad of reasons because it has some limitations in reporting. All I'm hearing from my peers is, oh yeah, don't use Performance Max. It's just, you know, Google Ads Express all over again. And they couldn't be more wrong. I have 200 some odd clients. We have 54 of them on Performance Max now. Not a single client. I don't have a single instance where Performance Max didn't at least meet the uh, previous performance on prior campaigns and in most instances improved them drastically and what's cool about performance max is it's more scalable it prioritizes new customer acquisition and it's audience first it's imagine running google ads without keywords like you're not going after keywords you're going after an audience so so you get to tell google these are the audiences i want to target google targets them for you and google brings you new audiences saying hey i know you told me to target this audience but these other two are performing really well we should expand into those too Wow, that's crazy. Is that kind of like a like a move towards like more automated media buying? Yep. You here's what's crazy, Alex. You don't create the ads. It's a lot like a responsive search ads where you just give Google the media. So you give it a bunch of images, a bunch of videos, a bunch of text, headlines, descriptions. This is the craziest part. This is gonna blow your mind because it blew my mind. Wow. You don't choose where the traffic goes. You don't give Google the landing page. Google oh, has really? something called <laughs> it has something called URL expansion. So you, you, what you really want is you want a content rich website. And if you have a content rich website, Google will decide what page somebody goes to at that point in the value journey, because wow. everybody's gotten so used to click to purchase narrative. That's not the way buying works. Shoppers are hyper-educated. Google's now operating off of a 500 touch point paradigm. It's in all their marketing materials. If you open up a, a, a recently wow. released Google marketing material, their whole point is people are going to take 500 touches before they actually buy. So you, Google's helping you learn how to teach to your customers. Insane. Insane. So you it's see so that. Cool. So, so, so these days you're seeing that uh, kind of like getting great results. Alex, it's badass. Now, it's it's amazing for e-commerce, SaaS, anything where Google can see the value of the customer. We've seen some limitations in lead generation, not because it doesn't work, but because it works too well and lead generation is difficult to distill value. And so, for instance, I used it for my agency. We're a Google Ads agency. We want yeah. people to, to hire us. So we ran Performance Max for ourselves and it rained leads. Like I got an insane number of leads, but the quality was not exactly what i wanted and and to be honest i couldn't even tell you that they're all low quality leads because we had so many that it was hard to even distill you know who landed where so if you're going to run lead generation my advice is raise the bar you Mm -hmm. know all marketers want as many leads as they can possibly get it's not what you want with performance max this is a trillion dollar ai machine learning mechanism it's going to bring you what you ask for be very very careful about what you ask for it's interesting is it accessible to every like google advertiser yeah, the whole it's if you don't have performance max, well, I just lied to you. I, I I'm pretty sure it's accessible to everybody in North America. And uh-huh. I think it's rolling out globally. You know, Google uh I think tends to roll out according to language because it needs to translate. So, but I'm I'm pretty sure if memory serves that performance max is now uh available to everybody. So that applies to like Google search and Google like shopping. 
No, dude, that's the craziest part. This is what's nuts, Alex. It uses Google's entire inventory. So search, display, shopping, YouTube, Gmail sponsored promotions, discovery, it's everywhere. And Google, the Google Display Network reaches 90% of all internet users on the planet, 65% of whom are reached on a daily basis. It's the most ubiquitous, prolific thing on the internet. And up until Performance Max, it was massively underutilized. Google took, and, and, and it was 90 some odd percent of Google's inventory. So 90% of Google's inventory was effectively unspoken for, unoptimized. And with Performance wow. Max, it opens up this massive swath of inventory. So the thing that I'm worried about is we're seeing unbelievable results in Performance Max, but I think part of that reason is we're the first to market. We're the first ones to use it. Oh, it. So the question to ask is what happens, you know, two, three years from now when everybody's on performance max, I bet you the performance drops a little bit because the competition is going to increase. But for the next 24 to 36 months, dude, it is blue ocean. It's amazing. Wow. This is incredible. So um, let's do like kind of like a simulation, right? Let's say I'm a like e-commerce, e-commerce business selling, I don't know, calculators, right? Yep. So how that would work? Like, like, let's say I want to sell want calculators. To Let's say I have like 10, 20 variations, like 10, 20 SKUs, like Google Shopping, like feed. Yep. So what, what other resources would I need? Do you want to build a Performance Max campaign together? Oh, like right now? Yeah. Yeah, let's is, do it. That's what is it is. Is this audio only or do you also share the video? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is being recorded. Uh, yeah, you can share. Uh, let me see if, um, yeah, you should be able to share the screen, yeah. Hey guys, uh, people have been asking me how we scale to multiple six figures or even seven figures per month without getting shut down on Facebook. And we have a very sophisticated solution for this that I want to share with you, but it's, it's just like too valuable to give away for free. So if you guys want this solution, just book a call with one of my team members and we'll show you exactly what it is and how it works and we'll see if that's a good fit uh, for you and for your business. So just book a call with my team member, we'll share it with you so you can scale your business to multiple six figures or even seven figures per month without getting shut down on Facebook, without having inconsistency and with high profitability. So just book a call with my team and I'll see you there. That's great. So let's you and I build a Performance Max campaign. Let me pull up my uh, little sandbox here. All right, so this is my dummy account, just so you know. Um, if you see weird ads, it's because I just use random images and media. Uh, so we're going to, you're going to go into Google and you're going to go to campaigns and say, Hey Google, I want to build a new campaign. And then you have to tell Google what you want. And this is really important. Performance max is goal driven. It's actually, in my opinion, it's the very first goal driven digital marketing mechanism. And other people are going to challenge me on that and say, no, that's not true. We've had conversion optimization forever. Conversion optimization isn't goal driven. Conversion optimization is you decide everything that needs to happen. And then Google or Facebook or whatever mechanism we're talking mm -hmm. about tests to see whether or not it's effective against this conversion goal. Flip the paradigm. You're actually going to tell Google, this is what I want. And then all the decisions Google makes are going to be based off of that want. So sales or leads in the example that you gave me, we are selling calculators. So we're going to go sales. We're actually not going to be able to build this in its entirety because I don't have a feed hooked up to my sandbox, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll get as far as we need to. So, well, I, I might not be able to do that. So I'm just going to go leads. But normally if you were e-commerce, you'd go sales and then you're going to add the conversion goal. So you need to make sure that you tell Google, and this is critically important, what is the goal that I want to accomplish? And because Google has conversion action sets, which are relatively new, you can give it multiple goals. So let's say you had 10 lead magnets to download. All 10 of those could be in a single goal or, or five different ways people could schedule with you. You give Google the goal. And now this is the thing that performance is going to be based off of. And then you say campaign type, and we're going to say performance max, which you'll notice says new. Mm. And you're going to see pretty quickly, uh, performance max reminds me a lot of uh, Facebook marketing, Facebook ads, which actually come, oh, and we're going to choose a conversion action. And I, do I already have conversion actions? Yeah, there we go. So I just wanted to make sure I had conversion actions in my dummy account. So now we're going to continue. And then Google's going to say, what's your budget? For performance max, you want to make sure that you're spending enough to reach critical mass. Remember, this is display based and it's not click mm. to purchase. We, we need to give people the opportunity to learn. So that's really important. And if ignore, don't do squeeze pages. You need to have a content rich website. So if you don't have a content rich website, you're gonna have a tough time. Now, do we want conversions or do we want conversion value? And uh, this is an, it's a philosophical discussion that we spend too much time on. And I wanna show you how to build this, but conversions means all conversions are created equal. So you're selling the mm -hmm. same thing and you just want as many of as you can. Conversion value means, well, I can sell something for 80 bucks, but I can sell something for $8,000 and I'm going after maximization of conversion value. You might think to yourself like, oh, I always want conversion value. That's not necessarily the case. Cause what if Google, what if the, the, the lifetime value of a customer isn't uh, intrinsically qualifiable from the initial gate. So there, there's a bunch of reasons to mess around with this. Now, 
Google is going to tell you to define a target cost per acquisition or a target ROAS. Do not do this. This is a catastrophic failure point. Because if you add a TCPA or a T-ROAS, then what's going to happen is you're going to limit the learning of the machine. So you're going to be intentionally wasteful in order to allow the machine to learn. And then when you go in and say, here's a TCPA, here's a T-ROAS, now Google knows who to get out in front of instead of instead of putting a leash on your hunting dog. Your location targeting, this is Google's cheating again, and, and it pisses me off. Google is targeting people who are in or interested in a geography. <laughs> I hate this, but there's no way to stop it. Previous Google campaigns allowed you to turn that off. You can't turn it off anymore. So choose your target geography, choose your language. You do want to have a language enabled. Normally what I would tell people in previous Google accounts is you don't have to select a language because it was keyword based. So if they're searching uh, the keyword and the language that you're at, you're bidding on, then you're going to target those people because this is heavy, heavy, heavy display based. Only select the languages that you want to advertise in. And then final URL expansion. This is the thing I was telling you about. Google will either choose the URLs or you can direct Google to the URLs. Do not do this. I think that this is catastrophic error. There might be a couple of reasons to do it if you're doing like list building or I don't mm -hmm. know what, but I think limiting machine learning at this point is in everybody's, puts everybody at disadvantage. The more settings or things that you should be familiar with if you built Google ads, but you're going to use URL expansion, which means Google's going to choose what page to send your traffic to. Now you can exclude URLs. So let's say that your blog is maybe more expensive than it should be, or you have a whole slate of URLs that uh, relate to products that you don't want to sell. You can exclude those and you can exclude them with rules, which is really helpful. So, you know, in your calculator example, if, you, if you're selling calculators and you're selling pocket protectors, but you don't want to push the pocket protectors into the URL expansion, you could actually say, if the URL contains pocket, then don't, don't deliver this URL. Now we're going to create our asset groups. This is the coolest part. You can create multiple asset groups. You're limited to a hundred, but what you're going to do is you're going to, I'll go get my URL real quick. You have a nice domain name. Yeah. Thanks man. It's um, <laughs> honestly, I, I bought it for 80 bucks and I just wanted as short a URL as I could possibly get. So you're going to give Google 15 images, which is really five images with three different um, aspect ratios. And mm -hmm. so here's, you know, whatever. I'm going to keep clicking until it tells me we're out. We're going to give 50, uh, Google 15 images, five logos with different variations. So make sure you're using like short favicon, whatever. Um, and Google's going to use this media to build your ads. Now this is important. Google's going to say, I need up to five videos. And by the way, if you don't have one, Google will create videos automatically for you. Don't let Google create your videos. They're horrible. They create slideshows with text over them. It looks like 2014 PowerPoint presentations. You have to have to have to create videos. Google's going to let you upload videos that are 10 seconds long. You don't want to do this. You want your videos to be at least 30 seconds long because without a 30 second long video, you're not going to get watch rates, which means yeah. you're not going to be able to optimize your media. Here's a really cool part. You can use any video in the YouTube ecosystem. Alex, who is your favorite musician? Oh, really? That's crazy. I mean, uh, Eminem. <laughs> All right, let's go Eminem. I got Eminem's Godzilla featuring <laughs> Juice World. Check this out. Bam. This is now my ad. And when wow, they click on that video, great. it goes to wherever I want them to go. Now, I don't recommend doing this unless you have a specific use case. But if you're selling a product or a service that somebody else has already explained better and you don't want to create media, you can go use this. I discourage it because this is a massive branding opportunity. You're going to get hundreds of thousands of views and you want them to see your face, hear your voice, see your logo, yeah. et cetera. But that said, you're going to want to upload videos, upload headlines, and Google will actually suggest headlines. And to be honest with you, they're not bad. Um, they're just crawling my website, as you can see. Um, headlines, long headlines, descriptions, build your ads. Here's the cool part. Google is going to show you your potential ad strength, and it's going to allow you to preview the ads across all of the available inventory points. Crazy stuff. The ninja sauce are the audience signals. We're going to go in and target our audience. And so we're targeting people that want to buy calculators. And then the question becomes, well, how do you get in front of people that want to buy calculators? Well, you can upload previous purchasers. So you can use your own data, upload a customer list, and then Google's going to go after this, not just the list, but people who look like the people that are on the list. You can do uh, interest and detailed segmentations. So let's actually look. Calculator, bet money they have this. Uh, savings and, well, finance, contractor pay calculators, salary calculators, conversion calculators. Measurement and tool sensors, that might be a little bit better. Google knows who's about to buy this stuff. I wonder if I can't do a scientific calculator. Like those, you know, those things they used to make us buy in school. Yeah, that's the closest that we could get. So we'd have to go other ways. So maybe we browse uh, in-market segments 
or you know what I want to do is I want to figure out uh, what type of um, so which which ones of these have you have you seen the most success with like in market segments? Um, so like- in market means that they actually want to buy that thing. So I can do huh. in market for what's one that was crazy. Uh, here's wallets. Here's somebody who wants to buy a wallet. Here's somebody who wants to buy a credit card wallet. Here's somebody who wants to buy a Bellroy, which is a specific brand of wallet. Here's yeah, somebody who yeah. wants to buy RFID blocking wallets. Like unbelievable levels of granularity. In market means they're ready to buy. Affinity means that they're interested. So if I go to cars and I find an affinity audience for cars, these are all in market. Let's go find our affinity audiences. That means that these are just enthusiasts. And when you ask which one has the most success, it really depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? So are we list building, brand building, going direct purchase? Direct purchase, you always want to go in market. This still is not my favorite way to target. My favorite way to target is custom segment. This is going to blow your mind. When we go custom segments, you can target people based off of what they've searched for on Google. The qualification here. Wow. This is not keyword start targeting because keyword targeting means you search for the search term that I want. And then I have to be one of the four ads that shows up and you have Uh to click on me. Instead, this is going to let me target something that you've searched for at some period in the past. And you have to think about what are the things that you have searched for that might lead you to buy, buy my product or service that aren't necessarily related to my products or service. For instance, I had the highest performing real estate investment campaign on the planet for seven years. And I can tell you that a lot of people who sell their house quickly do so uh-huh. because they're about to get divorced. So if you come in here and Google divorce attorney, I'm now going to send you my ads for selling your house fast. What are the predictive indications of intent? What are the things that somebody would search for that lets you know they need a calculator without them saying, I need to buy a calculator. And here's the crazy part. You can use URLs. So if I wanted to go after, let's say I have a a software product and I want to go after all of Infusionsoft's clients, I can go to infusionsoft.com forward slash login and target Infusionsoft's login URL. And I can go directly at their specific client base. Uh, I can target people based off of interest. Can you, can you target of- like, let's say, can you target people who are like Shopify, let's say, so for your, for your agency, let's say you want to yep. target like e-commerce, like brand owners, right? Let's say shopify.com forward slash admin. I could target this URL. So we'd go like accounts.shopify.com. Bam. Wow. And then straight. I would do this accounts. And you know, what's crazy about the example you just gave me. I own the three X Shopify challenge. In order to fill up this challenge, we targeted the exact URL that you just said. I can tell you definitively that this works. And then here's (laughs) Google giving me more search term ideas. And I can target people based off of the types of websites they browse or the types of apps they use. Think about this one, dude. Like the the type of app that somebody uses can tell you so much about this human. I can get in front of people who are in Narcotics Anonymous, people who are high net worth, people who are cheating on their spouse. Like, I wonder if Ashley Madison is here. Dude, there it is. There it is. Look at that. I can target people who are cheating on their spouse. Imagine the things. And, I, you know, there's there's ways that you would canvas this. I'm not going to come out and say, I know you're cheating on your wife, but I might try to sell you perfume or cologne or, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many things that you can do now with Performance Max. And the coolest so it, part about it, it shows it shows like 500. That's that's always like wrong, right? Like, I mean, that always shows like very inflation inflated numbers. Yeah, I don't. But I don't. So Google's estimates and projections are based off of a 12 year retroactive look back. They cut off peaks and valleys and then they're off by 30 percent in other direction, which is a 60 percent window of variance, which means they're effectively worthless. But that's the best that we can do. If you want to get a free course and transition you from drop shipping to eight figure e-commerce brands and also on scaling e-commerce businesses with high profitability, there should be a link below. Apply, just fill your information. You will also get uh, access to the private community of six, seven, and eight uh, figure entrepreneurs. Now, this link is only for people who already do at least $30,000 per month or more in sales and want to scale their sales, want to scale their profitability, want to avoid ban ad account issues. So if that's you, just apply for that. Uh, There should be a link in the description. Click on it, get free resources. It's completely free of charge and you'll get a lot of value out of it. So make sure you click, get access and let's get back to the video. But for, with Performance Max, the short version is you give Google the goal, you give Google the audience, you give Google the assets and then Google figures out how to sell people your shit. It's Man, unbelievable. This, this is insane. This is insane. And you've actually in practice have seen this work. I have 54, I have 54 high performing performance max accounts, 54. I've got, I've got published case studies on my YouTube channel. You can go check them out. Like we've seen it in practice. And what's really cool is you tell Google the audience and then Google will come and say, Hey, here's an even better audience. We have a client who sells shelf stable food. So like Uh preppers, people that think the world's going to end buy this food, but we started (laughs) running and then Google came to us and said, Hey, um, uh, sailing enthusiasts, people with boats. And I'm like, Oh my God, I never even would have considered that. 
But of course, if you're on a boat, you want to show stable food. So it's not necessarily preppers or doomsday folks. It's, it's an entirely different audience. And Google spoon fed me that audience. It's crazy. This is insane. This is insane. This is the greatest wow. thing to happen in digital marketing since Facebook allowed for interest-based segmentation and put ads in the newsfeed. And like, you mentioned not, not a lot of people kind of like using it at bro, the moment. Go, do me a favor. Go Google Performance Max and look at what the, the quote-unquote authorities are saying. Everybody's bashing it. It's because they're all trying to use it the way that Google told them to use it. You can't do that. Nobody can trust Google. My course is called You Versus Google. Google is nothing but a bunch of lying serpents. You have to test everything <laughs> and then think to yourself logically like, oh, why would I do this? Why would this work? Why wouldn't this work? What are they, you know what I mean? Like you got to hack it a little bit. But once you've hacked it, like, damn, the thing is amazing. What's interesting about it and what I like about it because I'm an agency owner is there are no golden rules. You can't say like, oh, give me the blueprint to working for this thing because it depends on, well, what's your goal? What's your industry? What's your business? Yeah. What's your product? What's your service? What's your sales cycle? How long do you have a customer list? Do you not? What, but you can go after new audiences, after new audiences, after new audiences. Google's inventory used to be easy to exhaust because they're, they're a finite number of people searching mm -hmm. for a specific keyword. Yeah, It's now almost impossible to exhaust because if I run out of an audience, I go after another audience. And mm -hmm. as long as you haven't sold to everybody who could ever possibly buy your product or service, there's always another audience out there. So, so with that comes another kind of like, you know, so if it goes like 90% after display, which is like native, right? It's like Sabula, Outbrain, stuff like that, yeah. right? That's the same placements pretty much or similar. Kind of. Yeah. The Google Display Network's a little more, what would you say, nimble. It's, you know, uh, some of the other display based advertising mechanisms tend to be kind of restricted. The reason that you can't give Google specific dimensions is because, dude, when you see where it is able to squeeze in some of these ads, it's crazy. Uh -huh. um, but it, it, it's the same paradigm. So maybe I'm splitting hairs here a little bit. Interesting, because. Yeah, I know that for for instance, like Outbrain and Bula, you have to put like a bunch of like exclusions, like, hey, don't place ads on these particular websites because you know the quality of traffic is garbage. It's gold. Do you have to do you have to no. do it here? No. No, you might get to your so if you have let's say you have a product where Google might make a mistake and target an audience that you don't want to target, it could be helpful for you to just canvas. But the benefit you have is from a machine learning perspective, if it's not accomplishing your goal, Google won't do it. It's going to try in the beginning. That's why I said, don't have a target ROAS or, or target cost per acquisition in the beginning and let it run for 90 days. And if you can let it run for 90 days without a, a ceiling, without a lid, then when you add a TCP or T ROAS, Google's going to know exactly where to go in order to get you to your goal. Wow. Incredible. Let's, let's quickly touch on like YouTube, right? Do you do like a lot of YouTube with, uh, with yeah, your dude, clients? Well, the reason that Google asks for videos is so that it can use these videos instead of YouTube ads. So I like, if we're talking YouTube solely, I prefer YouTube and stream. I know that there's a ton of other inventory available mm -hmm. on YouTube, bumper and display and whatever, but I, YouTube and stream ads to me are the most strategic and they tend to have the highest performance if you know how to use them. But if you're going to run YouTube solo, you have to have high budgets. Google's education, I think the number is 16X. You need 16X your target cost per acquisition. So if I pay $500 for a lead, I have to take $500 times 16, and that needs to be my daily budget in YouTube. That's super high. Most people don't oh, realize wow. that. So people are like, oh, I'm going to go spend $500 a month on YouTube. I'm like, good luck. It's, it's too, you're never <laughs> going to reach critical mass. You don't have enough data. You could do that in performance max or, or at least have a lower budget in performance max, but YouTube eats budget eats through it for youtube specifically like is there like a particular like price point that you know i've heard some people saying oh if your product is like 20 bucks 30 bucks like it will be very hard to make it work you need to have like at least whatever like 50 80 dollars margin is that is that correct like in, from your experience like do you, you need you, to have a, a high lifetime value of a customer if you have a 20 dollar product but they come back often then that's great i have a client who sells industrial tape his average order value, his average initial order value is $4, one roll of tape. But what they're doing is they're buying the tape to test it. If it works, then they buy pallets full. And so his lifetime value of a customer is 20 grand. So he'll pay $80 to get a $4 purchase because he knows that if they like the tape, they're going to spend you know tens of thousands of dollars with him. That's um, more like a B2B, right? That's B2B. But even you know B2C, consumables. You know We have a client that sells shampoo and he doesn't make money on the first two or three orders. But over time, if they continue to buy the shampoo, then they'll, that's the problem with traffic is it's commoditized. And if you have a hyper-efficient business that's willing to spend more for a customer than you are, they're going to get the visibility. So like, if you came to me and said, I'm selling cell phone cases, it's, there's no way, there's no <laughs> way because every, every drop shipper, you know, schlepping BS out of China is trying to sell cell phone cases. They're $20. 
you you make you know 10 20 30 margins at absolute most but even then nobody's buying anything else from you there's nothing there's no ascension from a cell phone case right like yeah. it's it's a near impossible product to push out so think about what's the lifetime value what's the ascension can i build a community around this can i do anything value add can i bundle you want to Stop treating things as a one-click, one-purchase paradigm. Start treating things as a, you're building a community. You're serving people. You're, the minute somebody buys from you, they're not mm -hmm. a customer. They're a member of your community. How do you continue to serve that person from now until the rest of their life? How do you love on them? How do you really make their life better? Mm -hmm. How do you make an impact? And, and if that sounds dramatic or quixotic or naive, then you're not paying attention to the way digital marketing works. Build, use your traffic to build a community. Because if you build a community, you don't have to pay for traffic anymore. And I'm a paid traffic guy telling you this. That's such a good point. That, that breakdown was amazing. Um, man, thank you so much for, for um, how do people find you? You can go to my website, sol, the number eight.com. I have the number one Google ads agency on the planet. Uh, I shoot a YouTube video every day. So if you want more content, go to YouTube and just search for. Oh, really? Like it's a, you, you mentioned you're ranking well on Google or. Dude, Google the words, Google ads agency. You might find a directory before me, but bet money on the very first actual agency that shows up. What did you do to get there? I mean, <clears throat> that's probably the most competitive. Like... <laughs> it's the most competitive keyword in the world. I have, I have four people on staff that do nothing but, but work on our, our content marketing. So it's, it's high, 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 high value content. Dude, I, I've got blogs on that site that are 30,000 words long um, and they're not fluff pieces. They're like months long, high value content. And we don't, we don't do link building per se, but I do a lot of, I have a lot of strategic relationships and a lot of folks that link back to us because they know we know what we're talking about. Wow. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll link your website to your YouTube channel. Wow. Thank you so much for, for making the time for this it, it was like wow i mean i'm, I'm literally like i'm recording this interview I'm, I'm sending it to my guys like to my media buyers like hey we need to test this like performance max stuff yeah don't here's what's going to happen they're going to run it and it's going to fail the first time uh -huh. mine did you can't let them give up they've got to keep going you just uh -huh. it's failing forward so it's going to fail but you're going to figure out like oh well this part worked and then do it again and then it's going to fail again but now you have two parts that work and so on and so forth don't let them get up. Dude, this is the biggest change in digital marketing history. And we're three years ahead of the curve. Nice. Nice. Well, man, thank you so much for, for making time, guys. I will, will link to Kasim's uh, website um, and also to, uh, to his YouTube channel so you can follow him on YouTube. Yeah. Thank you so much for making this. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And Thanks for uh, having me, Alex. Yeah. Thank you.